What is Bitcoin and why is it valuable? This is the question asked most frequently when I talk to anyone new about Bitcoin. The reason why Bitcoin is valuable has quite a detailed answer and one that I have addressed in other videos. The main one I would encourage you to watch is my Bitcoin lecture to the University of Nottingham postgraduate students given online in May 2021. You can find this video on my YouTube channel and the latest news page of my website. Essentially, one of the most significant features of Bitcoin that makes it valuable is its decentralised nature. It is managed by many diverse actors, as will become apparent in this video. Also, the software sets the number of Bitcoins ever to be created at 21 million, making Bitcoins scarce. This scarcity gives Bitcoin the character of hardness from an economic perspective that means it is hard to make more of them. As a result, many people refer to Bitcoin as digital gold, because gold was considered the hardest form of money, that is, until Bitcoin was invented. You can read more about this in my book Truth Decay – How Bitcoin Fixes This. I continuously refer to the financial issues related to Bitcoin in many of my newsletters and videos. For this particular video, I am focused on explaining exactly how Bitcoin works and its unique characteristics and properties. Mainly, I am focused on how the technology works and how to use it daily. Hopefully, some of its value will become apparent to you as I explain this. Bitcoin is an open source software protocol, which means anyone can look at the code and see how it works. It is also decentralised, which means that no one owns it. Management of the system operates using a carefully designed incentive structure, motivating each of the actors to interact honestly. By operating dishonestly, such actors would harm themselves more than the network. Therefore, they are discouraged from such behaviour. It can be pretty complicated to understand, but hopefully it will become more apparent why this is by the end of this video. Money is essentially a technology that enables human beings to transfer value. So here, if Eva wants to pay Ben for a good or service, she would give him some coins, and he would give her a good or service in return. This would be the transaction. But if you do the same thing with Bitcoin, you're not holding coins or notes. Using the Bitcoin software enables value exchange using an app on your computer or mobile phone, without using a third-party business owned by someone else, like Google Pay, Apple Pay or any existing banks or PayPal. This means value exchange can remove itself from these entities with different operating incentives than the Bitcoin network. When I was accepting Bitcoin payments in my business in 2017, I was just using an app on an old mobile phone. I downloaded the Blockstream app, which is quite old now, for this purpose. Upon completing a service, my staff entered the amount charged and the app would calculate the Bitcoin payment. Suppose we go back to Eva and Ben. If Ben, or myself as a shop owner, wants to receive Bitcoin, we can offer Eva a QR code to scan. This QR code represents our public wallet address. This address that anyone can see enables us to accept a payment. This is the code to Ben's Bitcoin address or public wallet address. You can see a row of letters and numbers here. All Eva has to do is scan Ben's QR code with a similar app on her phone and it will mean that she will be able to send any Bitcoin that she owns into the wallet that Ben is holding on his phone. That is how they create their Bitcoin transaction. To make a payment, Eva needs to unlock the funds she holds in her wallet. For this, she needs a key. In Bitcoin terms, this is the wallet private key. Individuals can keep private keys in their possession or delegate ownership to a centralised exchange like Coinbase. For convenience when paying Ben, Eva will likely keep a small amount of Bitcoin on her phone wallet, to which she has the private key, 
or she may store it on an exchange with a phone app in order to make payments. For more long-term and independent storage, she may use a hardware wallet. Here is a picture of a white device. This is an example of a hardware wallet known as a Trezor. The benefits of these small devices are that they store the private key, essentially a unique computer code, to Eva's funds separately from her primary computer. Using this device reduces the chances of criminals discovering the key and stealing her funds from her. The software developers have been very clever in allowing this private key to be encrypted using simple English words. As a result, it is possible to remember the private key in your memory. It is essential to write these seed words down and keep them securely. If you lose your device or the software where you hold your wallets becomes corrupted, it will be possible to recover your funds with your private keys so that your savings aren't lost. Here are some examples of hardware wallets. The oldest and most established ones are Trezor on the left and a ledger to the right. Here you can see how the Trezor plugs into a laptop, which helps to keep the private keys on the device separate from the computer. Hacking software can record screens or record keystrokes. Keeping the private key on a separate device from the computer provides an extra level of security. Here is an example of what the hardware wallet looks like when you open it, if you haven't seen that before. After plugging the device into a computer, it creates a screen like this. You can see that there is a space for the public wallet address of the personal entity you are looking to pay, similar to Ben as he presented his QR code. If you aren't able to scan the QR code, you can enter the public wallet address of the other person as a row of letters and numbers. You can then enter the amount of money you are looking to transfer, and the hardware wallet will calculate a Bitcoin conversion. When you send a Bitcoin transaction, rather than the shop owner paying a fee to accept the payment, the person making the payment pays the transaction fee as part of the transaction process. The cost of the fee usually is dependent on how busy the network is. Good wallets will often allow you to set the price depending on how fast you want the transaction to go through. So for example, if you're going to pay in a shop, you might want the transaction to be quite fast so that you can leave quickly. But if you are paying for something over the internet that isn't going to be delivered straight away, it probably doesn't matter as much if it takes some hours for the transaction to complete. Once all the parameters are set, the participants complete the transaction. All that remains is for the transaction to go through. The transaction mechanism is one thing, but once completed, how do you know the transaction is recorded and that all records are kept honest? This is where we get into more of the detail as to how Bitcoin works behind the scenes. A computer known as a node keeps a record of the transaction between Eva and Ben. At the same time, the node is recording their transaction and simultaneously gathering other transactions that are occurring all across the network. Not only that, there are computers set up all around the world as Bitcoin nodes keeping track of transactions at the same time. All of them gather transactions to report to the other nodes, simultaneously keeping track of the blockchain as it is built. There is even now a satellite in space operating as a Bitcoin node. These nodes communicate in concert with each other to ensure that their records are kept aligned. This is known as consensus. Recording the transactions is one thing, but how do we know that these transactions aren't repeated? How does the Bitcoin protocol ensure they remain unique? This is where a blockchain comes in. I have made this animation here to try and explain to you how this works. So we have computers, or as we call them nodes, collecting all of these transactions. You can see them coming in here, and you can see the nodes keeping a record of them. 
these transactions are all coming into the computer one by one. The node is letting all of the other nodes know about these transactions simultaneously. However, to make sure that the transactions remain unique, we need the assistance of a miner. This is where Bitcoin mining comes in. A block of transactions is created to occupy each block. During this time, Bitcoin nodes set up for mining work out a complicated maths puzzle and compete to find a solution. This requires energy in the form of electricity, the necessity of which increases as the task becomes more difficult. When a miner discovers one of the solutions to the puzzle, it creates a unique code to attach to the block. This is known as a proof of work because energy has been expended to discover it. The proof of work is attached to the block and the transactions included in that block are then acknowledged by the network as confirmed. As a reward for providing this proof of work, new bitcoins are created and awarded to the miner that solved the puzzle. At the moment in 2022, the reward for confirming a block of transactions is 6.25 bitcoins. This reward halves every 100,000 blocks, which approximates to every four years. Four years ago, the prize was 12.5 bitcoins, and then roughly four years before that, it was 25 bitcoins. The reward reduction every four years has historically influenced the price of each bitcoin. I have explained this in detail in my book and some of my previous newsletters. Following on from this first block of confirmed transactions, another block of transactions comes in. We get another proof of work, then we get another confirmation and a reward. That means the first set of transactions now has two confirmations, this one and the second one. Then we do the same thing with another block of transactions. The first and second blocks move up, the third block then needs to be confirmed. The first set of transactions has now had three confirmations. So this is how the blockchain is created. We have block one that is then connected to block two that's then connected to block three. So the transactions in blocks one to three have now been confirmed. So anyone who has made a payment included in these blocks can now be confident that their transaction has been verified and can't be repeated. Their confidence can increase the more blocks are constructed after them on the blockchain. The nodes keep track of everything that's happening, and it continues like this. The nodes continue to collect transactions. The transactions are managed by the next block and included on the blockchain via a confirmation from the miners. The blockchain continues to build as the miners confirm the blocks as they are going through. This construction of the blockchain, then, is what makes Bitcoin unique. Even though computers could copy software, until Bitcoin was invented, there was no way of making software that computers couldn't repeat. In computer science, this was known as the Byzantine General's problem. This is a term etched from the computer science description of a situation where involved parties must agree on a single strategy to avoid complete failure but where some of the involved parties are corrupt and disseminating false information or are otherwise unreliable. It is a problem that references a situation in a battle where a military general needs to make sure that his instructions are being received clearly and without being corrupted. If his instructions aren't received clearly or a spy in his miss corrupts the message, the deception would compromise his strategy and the general would lose the battle. By having many different actors involved in confirming the blockchain and having specific incentives and rewards programmed into its software, all of this together creates a unique product which makes Bitcoin so special. By solving the Byzantine General's problem and with additional unique characteristics programmed into the software, we have created a solution for money that now operates as a machine of trust.